Do you have great water pressure, but your sprinklers aren't performing? I'm Sprinkler Nerd Andy, and you are watching Sprinkler TV. So today we're gonna talk about that water pressure, why you might have good pressure, or you think you have good pressure, but your sprinklers or your system's not performing, okay? And in order to, to discuss this, what we're going to talk about are the two key components of pressure, which is static water pressure and dynamic water pressure. And those two key terms, static versus dynamic, are important to understand as it relates to designing any irrigation system, or troubleshooting any irrigation system, especially when it comes to pipe sizing and how many sprinklers you're going to put on a zone. We're gonna save that for later. What I really wanna do is just describe the difference between static water pressure and dynamic water pressure so that it could help you in understanding why you think you have good static pressure, but then out at your sprinklers, they appear to be not performing, okay? So to do this, I want to preface by saying, this is a great book. This is Choate's Irrigation Manual and the concepts that we're gonna talk about here you know, I'm not making up. These are factual hydraulic concepts as outlined in most irrigation design manuals, including Choate's manual. So let's start with static water pressure. Static water pressure is just that, it is static. It is the pressure on the system when the water is motionless, when it is not moving, when everything is turned off, okay? And I'm gonna show you an example of taking a pressure reading, just like I have this pressure gauge here. You can hook something like this up to any hose bib to take a static pressure reading. And when you do that, you wanna make sure everything's off. If you're putting this on your house, make sure all um, of the appliances, the water appliances in your home are turned off and you can take a static reading, okay? So static water pressure is the pressure when the water is motionless. And what's important to remember is that in a level piping system, static water pressure is the same everywhere. It is the same at the beginning of the system and it is the same at the end of the system. The only difference in pressure is going to be elevation, okay? Water at the top of the hill will be at a lower pressure than water at the bottom of the hill because the force of gravity on the water is what changes static pressure. That's it, it is just gravity, all right? And that gravity we often refer to as losing about or gaining about a half a pound of pressure per foot of elevation. It's actually 0.433 pounds of pressure, but easy to remember if you just think one half PSI for every foot of elevation. So if you're going down, you are gaining pressure. And if you go up, you are losing pressure, okay? That is it, static water pressure is the pressure when the water is not moving and it's the same at all points on the irrigation system, okay? Now let's switch over and talk about dynamic water pressure. And dynamic water pressure is when the water is moving. It's also referred to as operational pressure or the working pressure. And it's, it's pressure taken at any point in the system while the irrigation system is running, okay? And the reason that you want to take or understand that is because when water moves through pipe, it is affected by the components on the piping system as well as the size of the pipe, okay? And I wanna give a little analogy here just to clarify something that we hear a lot and it's a misconception. It's the, it's the good old, you know, put your thumb on top of the garden hose, right? And the, and the distance increases, okay? Most people, it's common belief or just common assumption that you are increasing the pressure in order to spray that water further out of the garden hose. However, it's actually further from the truth. You are not increasing the pressure because the only way to increase pressure is with gravity or a pump, okay? So when you put your thumb over the garden hose, what you're doing is restricting flow, making a smaller outlet for that water to travel through. And so what the water has to do is it has to speed up. So you get a greater velocity. So what looks like pressure or that stream of water going further 
is actually the result of faster moving water. So when you put your thumb over the garden hose, you're increasing the velocity of the water, but you're not increasing the pressure, okay? That's off topic, but I wanted to clarify that because we hear that a lot and people often think that that's increasing pressure, okay? And when you move water through a pipe, the pressure, the dynamic pressure will be different at different points in the piping structure. So the dynamic pressure, let's say at your home, is going to be different than the dynamic pressure out at the actual sprinkler because there is something called friction loss, all right? And when water moves, it cr friction is created and the amount of friction is going to be a result of the size of the pipe and the different components that the water has to travel through to get from point A to point B, all right? So let's just come, let's just talk about a couple common devices that the water has to travel through, okay? Water comes to your house, it goes through the city water meter, okay? Then it may go through a secondary irrigation meter, okay? Then it likely goes through a backflow preventer, then it goes down through the main line, it gets to the sprinkler valve, it has to travel through the valve, then it goes through the lateral pipe, <laughs> then it goes through the service T fitting through the swing joint into the sprinkler, okay? And in that process, there are going to be 90 degree elbows, there could be some T's, there could be some 45's. Every time water changes direction through a fitting, it causes friction loss and friction loss uh, minimizes dynamic pressure as well as pipe size. So on paper, in theory, and this is what you would do as an irrigation designer, is you would start with your static water pressure, you know, using a gauge like this at your home. Let's say you have 60 pounds of pressure. Then what you would do is you would add up all the devices. You have a water meter, that might lose five pounds of pressure. You have a backflow preventer that might lose anywhere from five to 10 pounds of pressure. Then you have your irrigation valves, and then you have your piping, the size of your main line and the size of your smaller lateral lines. And you can look this information up. I'll drop a couple links in this video. Uh, most manufacturers have t uh, pipe tables that give you the pressure loss or the friction loss per 100 feet of pipe, okay? So let's say for instance, um, and I'm totally making this up because I don't have it here in front of me, but let's say the size of pipe that you're using, you look in the table and it says you're going to lose three PSI for 100 feet of piping. Well, if you had 300 feet of piping times three PSI loss, there's nine PSI loss just through the pipe, okay? So when we think about why, why do I have good pressure at my home, but my sprinklers aren't performing, it's because of the pressure loss through the devices, through friction, pressure loss due to friction, and that will give you the actual dynamic pressure reading. So you could have um, pipes that are undersized. You could have a system that wasn't designed properly from the beginning. They didn't calculate what the PSI loss would be through all of those devices. And sometimes the city water is actually subject to fluctuation. So when your contractor initially installed your irrigation system, maybe you had 70 PSI at your house or at the source, and they built the system based on that. And maybe for whatever reason, this year you turn on your system and your static pressure is only 55 pounds, okay? That might not be enough to operate the sprinklers correctly. And two things that you, sh you should look for, I'm off topic here a bit, but sometimes in neighborhoods, there are pressure reducers out uh, in the city. You know, especially if, you're, if your property's on a hill, they generally will uh, put pressure reducing zones in. So you can call the city and perhaps they can tweak that. And then oftentimes in the home, there is a pressure regulator on or pressure reducing valve right on the water um, in your home before it splits off and goes out to the sprinkler system. So take a look at those, at those things. Um, but typically, if you think you have good pressure and you do have good pressure, but your sprinklers aren't operating, it's due to the friction loss in the pipe somewhere, okay? 
either because there's a restriction now or it wasn't designed properly. And so I really want you to think about dynamic pressure. What are the things on the system that are causing the pressure to reduce um, over between point A and point B, okay? Um, yeah, I think that's that's really it. Uh, the main concept for today is static pressure versus dynamic pressure and understanding how all those components on the system will reduce the amount of pressure. So that if you had 70 at your source, that is why you might only have 45 pounds of pressure at the sprinkler or less because of that friction loss through the devices and through the pipe. So hope that helps. If we can answer any more of your irrigation design questions, troubleshooting questions, or any irrigation question in general, feel free to reach out to us. You can contact us by phone, chat, email, text message. And until the next episode of Sprinkler TV, happy sprinkling. We will see you then.